So you're a new tournament director and you are ready to run your tournament uh, and then you realize you have to use Swiss Sys. In this video, in this series of videos, I'm going to show you very briefly how to run a Swiss tournament, uh, a Swiss system tournament within Swiss Sys. Uh, it's really pretty painless. You just sort of have to know what you're doing. Um, and I'm going to give you some tips here to, to help you get through it. So uh, first things first, uh, hopefully you have purchased Swiss Sys. So I'm going to open Swiss Sys 11. Um, I've been using this since Swiss Sys 8 or 9, I suppose. So, so to me, th this is second nature at this point. Hopefully I can make it make sense. Uh, usually when it, it starts up, you'll get these tips. Uh, I do like to leave them because sometimes you can, uh, you, can, you can pick up some nice things in here. But if you want to close it, that's fine too. I'm just going to hit OK. And then you get this task launcher. Um, if you are, you know, uh, uh, opening a, a file, continuing a, a tournament, you can just click on one of these. But uh, for now, we're going to set up a new tournament. So we're going to go to set up a new tournament. And it's going to ask us for a few details. So I'm just going to give it a, a test title here. Uh, we'll call it the uh, Spence Fantasy Chess. My affiliate is the Jack Spence Chess Club, uh, named for a chess historian, Jack Spence. So we'll, we'll call it Spence Fantasy Chess. And uh, for the tournament time control, We'll put in game 30, d5. So this is, um, this will be dual rated. For the starting date, I guess we'll put in today. Today is 10, 13, 2023. And we'll, we'll say it's a one day tournament. So we'll, we'll, we'll end it today as well. 10.13.2023. Now, uh, once you've done this, and, and again, you can always go back and, and edit these things later, and I'll show you how to do that very briefly. Um, before this video is through, you're going to want to add a section. And in most cases, if you're running just a one section tournament, you'll only need to add an open. Um, you can leave the, the time control here. It'll be the same thing. This is optional. I always add it just because, well, I don't know. I just always do. Uh, you, you can specify the, the section name. So we're going to call this the open section. Uh, the event type, so it could be a Swiss, it could be a team tournament, a round robin if you are uh, running a norm event perhaps. Um, probably if you're running a norm event you know how to use this program. Um, if you're running a blitz event, it might be a double round so that you uh, each, each player would play each other twice, so this is important to know. For coin toss, this is, uh, I think you just want to leave this be. Basically it's a question of uh, who's going to end up with white on the first board, so leave this be so the computer decides which is which. Ratings, uh, if it's a regular uh, regular rated event, so if it's game 30, it will be regular rated. You're using regular ratings most likely, so leave it there. If it's uh, if you're using Quick Chess or Blitz ratings, you can specify that here as well. So we're going to leave it as re uh, regular. And now let's say, I guess we've got, I don't know, let's just say four rounds. So we'll leave that be. We've set up our section. Um, if you have a reserve section, you might add another section here doing the same thing. I always like to add a filler section, just in case. So a filler section would be something where if you have an odd player, um, if they get a buy and you have a house player, you can pair them in this section uh, and do the rated games that way. Um, the alternative is that if you have two sections uh, where both players are, or both sections get buys, you can cross pair them in the filler section, and that way they can both get rated games. Both players can can get a, an extra rated game. So uh, a filler section is useful. And we'll, we'll set it up the same way. I don't specify the rounds when I do a filler section. I just leave it be. So we'll hit OK. We'll hit Done. And now we've got a brand new canvas to start putting players in. So now that we've got our open section set up, we're going to want to go to Players. And we're going to want to register players. In, in Swiss this, you can also do this with the F2 shortcut on your keyboard. And you get this nice dialog here. It asks you, first of all, to confirm... Um, Confirm which ratings you're going to use. So you're going to use the ratings, the regular ratings. If the regular rating is missing, what do you want to do? Um, you can leave it as it is, or you can prompt for choice. So let's say you have a player who has a regular rating, or but not a quick rating, or uh, more likely in this case, let's say they had a blitz rating, but not a regular one. Do you want to use that blitz rating or that alternative rating for pairing purposes? Um, you can. I, I like to set it for prompt for choice. I think that works out pretty well. Get most regular, uh, get most recent rating from USCF tournament history. This gets a little dicey because most of the time when you're running a tournament, you want to, um, you want to go by whatever the the official published rating is. So if you want to have the most up to date stuff, you can click this. I usually leave it be. 
Uh, so I'm going to hit OK. And now uh, you'll see that because we have the golden database installed, and I show you how to, in a different video how to, how to do that, you can see in here we've got all the players in the database listed by number so that when you search for them to add them, I'm just going to add myself, you'll see Hartman John R. I double click and it brings all my data over here. I'm going to hit accept and we'll go forward. I'm just going to add a few players here so you can get the sense of how it works. Um, I'm going to add some local Nebraska players if you see yourself. Uh, well, thanks for being a Nebraska player. So I'm going to add Steve Cusimano, who is a local player in the actual the Nebraska State President. I'm going to add him and bring him over. Let's say he needs a buy, by the way. So let's say he needs a half point buy in the last round. You can set this in advance by clicking these options here. So he's got his half point buy. I'm going to add him. I'm going to add the Nebraska delegate, Abhinav Suresh. Abhinav uh, needs a first. Uh, he's going to be a little late to the tournament, so he needs a half point buy for the first round. We'll, we'll accept him that way. Um, who else should we add? Uh, Mike Mills. Michael. He doesn't need any buys, so we can just accept. Now, it says his membership is expired or invalid. This is important. Um, if you notice, uh, it says his membership expired on September 30th. So when this pops up when you're doing your registration... Uh, you can flag the player so that it'll show up later and remind you that they need to make sure they've updated their membership before you can rate the tournament. So I'm going to accept him. It'll say, uh, is membership expired or invalid? That's fine. Um, one other option with SwissSys is that you can also, if you don't have the Golden database installed, you can search for players online. So let's say I search for Chad Forsman, who's another local player. And I wasn't happy with what I saw here. I could do... I could click this button, and it would give me just the Chad Forsmans. So Chad, you are in. Let's just add a few more players very quickly. So let's say I needed to add, oh my goodness, Slominski. And you notice, by the way, as soon as I start typing, it goes to uh, the place in the database list where they should end up. Jerry Slominski, I'm going to add him. His, uh, he's not expired. That's good. And we'll add a couple more. LaCroix. Nick. Again, if, if I did not have the Golden Database uh, installed, this would be blank, and I would have to search by name once I typed the name in the way I wanted it. So I would have to do this. There wouldn't be anything listed here. Ah, no USCF player matches your search criteria. Probably because it's Nicholas. So let's just say NI. Nicholas Paul, there he is. Okay. Accept. And it turns out we had a, uh, a few ringers show up. So Watson, John, and you notice I'm paging down here because I probably want John W. Not John W. What's John's, what, what is his middle name? <laughs> Why can't I remember John? Oh, John L. My friend John Watson, yes. He's going to come from California to play. And we'll add uh, oh, uh, Crush, Arena Crush. She pops up right away. She needs a uh, third point, third round bye. And last but not least, I'm going to add Magnus Carlson. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm going to beat him in the first round. There's Magnus. Uh, and his registration is um, is uh, going to pop up as expired, but since he's the former world champion, I guess we can accept him anyway. Okay, so we've got our list, and we've got our 10 players, and now I'm going to hit exit. Actually, I'm going to add an 11th, just so we can see what happens with buys in a minute. Last player I'm going to add will be... Hmm. Foyzer. Sabina Foyzer, who just wrote an article for Chess Life magazine. There's Sabina. I'm going to accept her. Okay. Now we're going to get this list popping up here that has all of the players in rating order. You'll notice, by the way, that here, if you can see this, Mike Mills, uh, his, uh, his uh, membership was expired, so it has that CTD flag. 
I also want to do that for Magnus, because if you remember, his membership is also expired. So if you double click on the names in here, you can uh, set some of these uh, features here. So if you need to give them a buy later on, if you need to flag them, if they're ineligible for prizes because they're playing as a guest of the tournament or something like that, you can flag that this way. Uh, if they never get the buy, let's say they started with a half point buy and, and you, for some reason you don't ever want them to be eligible for the buy, you can flag that. Uh, all these different things in here are, are editable just by clicking on the name in the list. Okay, so we've got our list. Um, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here and in the next video I'm going to show you how to do pairings.